Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Ovicast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring latest insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. Traditionally in the midsummer period, the idea of dosing and moving the cleaner pasture of former reseeds or aftercats was common practice. But with the increasing development of antenna maker resistance, that practice has become more problematic. To explain why, we're joined by Dr. Orla Keane. Orla sets out the key issues with dosing and moving the clean pasture, and in doing so, she also explains what we consider to be clean or clean up pasture on sheep farms. We discuss managing refugia and maintaining a separate warm population with Orla, discussing how dosing and moving the clean ground gives the resistant worms a competitive advantage and can speed up the development of antenna maker resistance. We discussed seeding pasture with susceptible worms by grazing with either on dose lambs or following those lambs with yews to provide a source of refugia for this cleaner ground. Orla also explains why that's not such an important factor on ground that's frequently grazed by sheep. Finally, we finish up with Orla highlighting why producers should consider using faecal sampling as the basis for decisions on worm dosing as the season progresses. However, we start off with Orla outlining why it was traditional practice and what the issues with it now currently are. In, in the past, you know, some of the advice was to dose and then move lambs to clean pasture or cleaner pasture after dosing. Um, and the reason that this was advised in the past is that these cleaner pastures have fewer worms. And so it was perceived to give a performance benefit to the lambs. Um, and, and it did this. However, the issue with it is that we also know that it selects for antlimintic resistance. And so by moving the lambs to clean pasture after treatment, you run the risk of developing um, antlimintic resistance, which means the wormers won't work for you in the future. So it's not really a very sustainable strategy and probably not something um, that should be done with with the long term view in mind. Look, I give that short term performance kick, but as you said, the long term practice of it in an ideal world where all these wormers, they work on 100 percent effective. The theory was sound, but we know that isn't the case, and we know we have a challenge on many farms. So we'll tease out why that's an issue in a minute. But maybe just first all, if you could maybe explain for us, clean or clean pasture, what are we talking about here on farms? Yeah, so I suppose you know, um pastures will have all all levels of contamination with um, parasite larvae. So, you know, strictly clean pasture should have no larvae on it. Now, that's very, very difficult to find, but we would consider ground like reseeded ground to be pretty clean. So there'd be very, very few parasite larvae on that ground. Um, as you move into something then that, ha- you know, ground that hasn't been grazed for a while, ground like silage after grass, that would be cleaner pasture. So there'd still be some parasite larvae on that ground, but there would be fewer than your uh, continuous permanent pasture. Let's say that's maybe in a a rotation and that's grazed all year round. That would be probably the most highly contaminated pasture on the farm. Okay, so look, in theory, the clean ground, the cleaner ground is lower burden, there's a lower challenge here. That sounds great. Why does it pose an issue then when we treat lambs and we put them out onto it? Yeah, so the reason it it does sound great and and that's why, you know, this kind of dose and move to cleaner ground strategy was advocated in the past. Um, But the reason that it it selects for anthelminthic resistance, it all comes back to the concept of refugia. So every time you treat um, um, lambs or or animals with with a wormer, the susceptible worms are killed and only the resistant worms survive. Uh, those worms lay eggs and so those eggs are passed out in the dung and contaminate the ground. Um, So if you have a situation where animals are dosed and then moved to clean pasture, uh, those those lambs that are dosed, they will then shed eggs from resistant worms onto that pasture and you will end up seeding your ground with resistant uh, worms. Now if you contrast that with a situation where you if you um, dose the lambs and then leave them on dirty ground. Um, Then in that case, the few resistant eggs that are shed, they're diluted by a huge number of larvae on the pasture that haven't been exposed to the wormer. And so there's no selective pressure on those larvae to develop resistance and the resistant, the few resistant eggs get diluted out. That whole concept, look, you spoke before about refugia, but the whole concept of managing refugia is something we're going to have to grow accustomed to. Like when we dose lambs, so we're given a competitive advantage to 
the resistant ones in a scenario where they're dosed and we're going out to a pasture that has very little burden. So that clean or, or the clean ground, particularly reseeds are going to come in now. By treating them lambs and putting them onto it, we're really effectively changing the population of worms on that pasture and giving them resistant ones a more competitive advantage. So as that becomes, that comes into more sheep grazing ground as the year progresses, Ola, we really are selecting harder and harder for resistant worms on it. Yes, absolutely. You know, those uh, lambs, those resistant eggs will go out onto pasture. Um, and so that pasture will now be heavily contaminated with resistant worms. You know, the majority of the worms on the pasture uh, will be resistant. And that's not a situation that you want. Um, so what you need to do is you need to think about where are the sources of refugia on the farm. And if you're looking at something like reseeded ground, uh, where there's very few, I mean, on most farms, there's two sources of refugia. You have the worms on pasture and you have the worms and animals that aren't treated. Now, if you're talking about clean ground or reseeded ground, then there's very few worms on pasture. So really, at that point, your source of refugia is animals that haven't been dosed. And usually there you're talking about the mature yolks that don't need to be dosed and they're your source of refugia. OK, so that, that brings up another theory. That brings up the whole idea of seeding pasture with susceptible worms. So if we're going to this clean ground and we assume the burden is low on it, we either go in with lambs that have a low burden and might need to be treated for a short time, or we come in after them with yews that haven't been treated. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So by using, by grazing um, lambs and yews that aren't treated on the same ground, um, that means that those yews will continually provide a source of refugia on that ground. There'll be a great source of refugia on that ground. So quite often, you know, people will have kind of a leader follower system where maybe the yews come in after the lambs and uh, they graze the ground. The worms they pick up generally don't bother them um, because they have reasonable immunity and um, because they're not treated the, the, the worms that infect the yews then, there's no selective pressure on them to develop resistance. So there's no selection for resistance within the yew population. So it's, it's important, particularly that cleaner ground, we have to be very careful how we manage it. Just look for clarity or like the whole dose of move, when we're on our traditional sheep ground that's been grazed all year by them, that dose in the move practice is it's a different criteria basically. That's going into heavily contaminated pasture. That's not a big issue per se. No, not really. I mean, you know, if you if you if you think about the the original concept behind dosing and moving, it was the as we said, you know, the traditional advice was to dose and move to clean pasture because that clean pasture is lowly contaminated. If you're dosing and moving um into you know another field that's been grazed recently by sheep and is heavily contaminated, we wouldn't consider that a kind of a dose and move. Dose and move generally refers to moving to cleaner, cleaner pasture. Um, and that's where the selection pressure for resistance can be, is when they're dosed and moved to cleaner pasture. If you're in, for example, you know, a rotational grazing system and you're just moving them on to the next rotation, but that, that ground has been grazed recently and is heavily contaminated, there's no extra selection pressure there. So we wouldn't really consider that an issue. So we're looking at half the grass free seeds or maybe a traditional cattle block. Look, I suppose all like the other key thing post weaning, we're going to talk about those and we're talking about maintaining product efficacy and managing refugia. The big one dose post weaning is fecal sampling and dosing only when needed. Like that's the other obvious way to reduce that selection for resistance. Yes. So, you know, every time we use an anthropomorphic product, you put a selection pressure um, on for the development of resistance. So we really only um, should be using these products when we need to use them. Um, and the best way to do that is to only treat the lambs when they need it and based on a group fecal egg count. So normally when the, you know, the, the fecal egg count of the um, group of lambs reaches about 500 eggs per gram, that's probably the time at which you start thinking about going into do to dose. So for the bit of time and money invested in fecal sampling, you really only get the saving there and the dosing and the labour of actually having to treat animals and reduced over Absolutely. And, you know, it'll vary very much from year to year based on, on the weather conditions. You might find that the egg counts stay low in a period of dry weather or that. So it really does help you time your um, dosing appropriately. Orla, always good having you on. Very important topic. Thanks very much for your time today. Thank you, Kieran. Okay, we're going to have to finish things up at this point. Again, Orla highlighted a number of key aspects. 
of how we can go about delaying resistance, particularly when we talk about managing new reseeds or clean up hash in the form of aftergrass. The whole concept of dosing and moving, where it was once advocated, now we need to consider a different approach as we try to combat resistance on farms. You can find out a bit more information about antenna resistance and some of the other measures we outlined, as well as some other aspects that are well worth considering on the landing page for alternative resistance on the Chagos website. I'll include the link in the description where you'll find more useful content and video clips on the subject. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for any updates from our sheep program, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chagos Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and listen in to any of our podcasts.